Hey everybody, special Faux Mondays here. I'm running a show from Faux Mondays that we did before last season because it's so relevant for this week. And what I want to talk about today is really just to talk about how you should think about the non-elk movement. And I'm going to do that when I say non-elk, not elk like a like what looks like a reindeer, but elk, non-alcoholic, because this category has been growing so fast. There's money to be made in the non-alcoholic spirits, wine and beer. And of course, my guest on Thursday will be Bill Schufelt, who is one of the big names in the space. He started a company called Athletic Brewing Company. I love their product. Such a fan. And you just see the stuff around. In New York City now, we have a number of non-alcoholic bottle stores. And so I just think it's an experience it's a really interesting space, money to be made, businesses to be started. Also just good to know about it in case you want to become a consumer of these items. And so a little back along last season, I had a guest on Douglas Waters, who is the founder of a company called Dry Atlas and also a non-alcoholic bottle store in New York City called Spirited Away. I have tried a lot of their products. I love them. I think he's great. And now Douglas and his wife are on a really cool around the world journey to basically work on this business while traveling all over the place. So they took off. I've been following their adventures on social media and the Dry Atlas, which is the company that they're working on, is really going to be the place you go to find out what you should be consuming. So go check them out. They are on the socials and you will love what you see. So I'm going to roll into this episode, which I took from a best of Faux Mondays. Check it out so that you have context for the conversation with Bill. And until I see you Thursday... Take care of yourselves, FOMO sapiens. FOMO. My name is Patrick J. McGinnis, and I'm a FOMO sapiens. And since you're here, I'm going to bet that you are too. And when you're like us and Monday comes around, you don't dread the new week. No, you wake up every Monday morning knowing that this week might just be the best one yet. This is Faux Monday, the snackable show that starts your week right with hot takes, life hacks, listener mail, and even some FOMO therapy. All right, everybody, this is Full Monday, the snackable companion show to FOMO Sapiens, which of course will drop on Thursday. But until then, happy Full Monday, best day of the week. I'm your host, Patrick J. McGinnis, venture capitalist by day, author and podcaster by night, and FOMO Sapiens 24-7. Now on Thursday, we're going to have Seth Goldenberg, who wrote a book called Radical Curiosity. He talks about how we can question commonly held beliefs to do great things. And I thought ahead of that, I wanted to bring on an entrepreneur who's doing just that. I met him here in New York City, and I just like really dug what he's doing. Now, this is kind of a crazy story because... Douglas, who you will meet in a second, Douglas Waters, was just, you know, working in marketing at Bank of America and then comes up with an idea that is really interesting. He starts the first bottle shop that is focused on non-alcoholic beverages. So think about it. It's like a beautiful liquor store, but everything inside is non-alcoholic. So that's what we're going to talk about today, how you come up with an idea like that, how you question commonly held beliefs, because people are like, you think about it, like a liquor store without liquor, that's interesting. And so that's what we're going to talk about. So, Douglas, welcome to the show. Patrick, thank you so much. It's great to be on your show. It is great to have you here. I'm very excited to talk about your business. Uh, your, your store is called Spirited Away, and you're going to be talking about this new media concept you're launching called Dry Atlas. We'll get there in a minute. But before you do, let's just talk about this business, Spirited Away, this non-alcoholic bottle store. Like, Where did this idea come from? Why did you do this? So it's a long story and it's been a long progression since I was a, a college student and completely irresponsible and reckless and drank way too much and um, was a very different man than I am today. And as I have aged and as I've matured since then, I have been putting a bigger and bigger focus on health in my life. And I want to live forever and that's going to be hard to do, but a part of um, one thing that I think will help me to live longer and to feel better while I'm alive is to drink less alcohol. It's for me, it's, it seems to have from, from the reading that I've done, it seems to have a, a, a pretty big ROI relative to re- reducing alcohol has a, has a big ROI relative to other things that I can do for my health. Yeah. And it's interesting because there's been a lot of talk 
I've been reading articles, kind of these like trend articles in newspapers about the fact that during the pandemic in particular, just a lot of people, you know, it's like rosé all day, which wasn't the plan, <laughs> but it's like, you know, it's like you started the pandemic, you'd have a cocktail at nine and by the end you're having a cocktail at 9 a.m. And it's really unhealthy. And as people reemerge into normal life, they're like, that doesn't serve me anymore. I don't want to keep that habit. At the same time, there's this whole movement that I've also been reading about called the sober curious movement. And especially among younger people, you know, alcohol is just not the thing that it was in the past. But I'd be curious, like, as you thought about doing this, like, did you, what were the trends that you viewed that actually convinced you you could actually launch a business here? Yeah, that's exactly right. I think there's a lot of talk about sober curiosity and a lot of people reevaluating their own wellness and thinking more critically about what we're putting into our bodies. There's so much momentum behind alcohol and the culture. It's just so pervasive. And if you don't stop to think about it and don't really deeply consider what you're, what you're putting into your body and to use your words, does it, does it serve me? You can very, very quickly get on this autopilot of Drinking, drinking alcohol most most days every week. Um, so, so for me, it was about about questioning that and being conscious of of what I'm what I'm putting in my body. And um, I still want to keep the the ritual of making a cocktail. I like that process. I like making cocktails for myself and family and friends. I like going to parties and holding a drink in my hand. But I also still want to wake feel great when I wake up early the next morning to go on a long bike ride. There's too many good things to do in life to to be tired and groggy and hung over and I wanted to have my cake and eat it too. So let's talk about somebody goes to Spirit Away. So you got this store in New York City. It's on Mott Street between Kenmare and Broom. So it tells me Google Maps and I've walked by your store and peeked in. But somebody walks into the store and they've never been into a store like yours before. Like if you if you were to just tell me, okay, a, a liquor free liquor store I would not know what I'm going to find. So what are the kind of products? What's the array of products? Kind of who yeah. shop in there? What's the vibe? Well, I really loved the way you described it because that's very much, you know, I have a positive experience of of going to liquor stores and going to wine stores and having a beautiful curated selection and a knowledgeable staff who can help me find what I need. And that was very much the inspiration for the look and the feel and the aesthetic of Spirited Away. And that's what I'm I, I hope we're, we're bringing to our customers, but we stock, I, I try to stock anything that adults could want to drink for an evening social occasion that is non-alcoholic. So we have spirit alternatives like non-alcoholic whiskeys and rums and tequilas and whatnot. We have distilled botanicals that don't taste anything like any spirits you've ever had. We have wine proxies and shrubs and dealcoholized wines and ready to drink cocktails and great craft beers and you know you you name it we don't have we don't have coca-cola or La, lacroix but we have you know adult adult social non-alcoholic evening beverages and when we talk about these things like what are what are the, the category leaders what are people really buying i've heard of some like there's a beer called the athletic i believe that that you sort of start seeing popping up at parties or keen organics is another brand that i've seen kind of he, here and there it's kind of cool to have it at yeah. a party now people are offering those what are what are people like are, are there certain sort of category leaders that you're seeing emerging those are two of the bigger ones athletic and can are, are out to an early lead but Really, the category is so young and so new that it's it's kind of anyone's game, and it's really developing every every day. Um, mm. it, it's kind of like we'll get new products in all the time that are kind of game changers that people will gravitate toward. And I think I think we're we're still in the very early innings of of what is going to be a very exciting industry to be a part of. FOMO. FOMO. Now, I imagine when you when you launch this company. You have the naysayers, people that say like, yeah, I don't know, like how many recovering alcoholics are there out there? Or, oh, <laughs> how are you going to convince people, you know, it's, it's, you've got the entire, I mean, how much money, just think about how much the beer industry spends on yeah. marketing, on brand, on trade and off trade. And so what were the, when you launched this business, like what were the nagging kind of doubts that people would throw in your face that you had to <laughs> kind of overcome? 
So you're exactly right. I think there there probably were a ton of naysayers, but I wasn't really hearing any of them because, you know, this was back, if you remember the summer of 2020, we weren't going to parties or on, I, I didn't have anybody to talk to about this thing. This was, you know, we were all working from home, doing the quarantine thing. This was very much like something I kind of developed in isolation and maybe doing so without exposing the idea to other people as it was um, developing in my head is what got me, what led me to, led me to kind of ignore those, those naysaying voices. What was it that, like, what, what convinced you to actually do the business to, like, go and open the store? Like, what did it take for that? It took my realization that this, the, the trend of people being more conscious about wellness and uh, taking their health into their own hands is bigger than just a bigger than just a, a a short term trend and that alcohol reduction and alcohol elimination was going to be a big part of that and then it also took me realizing that all the brands making a play in this space and early on 2 years ago there were far fewer of them than there are now but the early brands that were were getting out to an early lead were all pursuing a DTC strategy and I couldn't find them in stores anywhere. So I, I, I felt that the need was there and I felt that the market demand was there. That's interesting. So everybody is trying to sell directly over the internet, but you know, when it comes to like a new product, like that's like, maybe you just want to try it in the store. I know you do samplings at your store in New York exactly. city. People can figure out like, Oh, this beer is really nice. Like I can have this instead of, you know, opening a brewski or something like that. And so living that experience can make a huge difference. Now, since you opened the store, I'm curious, like what has been the massive thing that you have learned? You know, athletes and people who are in recovery from alcoholism and like, mm. no, there are a million and one reasons why people are people are drinking less or not at all. Yeah, it's really it's really good. I think it is a trend that it's funny because like you just sort of see it around that you know, I go to parties and like half the people at a dinner party aren't drinking now. And so you don't want to be the one who's getting all sloshy at the end of the table. Right. So it's just a cultural move into different things, which is really important to note. Now I do want to talk about your new baby that you're bringing to market, which is dryatlas.com. Talk about dry Atlas and what, you know, if we go to that website, which is live now, by the way, what we would find there. <laughs> My new baby is dry Atlas by spirited away. And the, the, the thought here, Patrick, is when, when I opened Spirited Away in 2020, tiny little space on Ludlow Street, I had probably about 40 SKUs on the shelves. The industry has absolutely exploded since then. I have, you know, 225 something on the shelves now, and there are a ton more that I would love to stock that I just don't have room for to meet the needs of people, people non-alcoholic consumers and people who want to better understand the breadth of the market, what's out there, what things taste like, what is, how is this going to make me feel, what do I mix this with? There are a lot of questions that I, my staff and I try to provide a very helpful consultative sales experience when you come to the store, but not everybody can come to Nolita and come meet us in person. So I want to do something that scales a little bit better than that and can help non-alcoholic consumers nationwide and the world over find find what they're looking for and and wade through this you know I'm launching with about 550 different liquids so wade through the just immense complexity of the space now and find find something that's best for them so it'll be a platform that allows users to rate and discover drinks on the world's most comprehensive non-alcoholic beverage database. It's great because you're going to help people overcome their FOBO, their fear of a better option. Because when we have too many <laughs> options, we can't choose. Douglas is solving exactly your problem. It. That's exactly <laughs> no. it. Too many, too many good options now, and that's the way people feel when they come into the store. They, yeah. they always say to me, like, you know, I came in here wanting a, a bottle of dealkalized wine or something. I had no idea that there were all of these different options. So they're kind of like a deer in the headlights. So this is uh, exactly to your point, helping them to get over that fear of too many options. All right. So everybody head over to dryatlas.com. 
And if you want to learn more about Spirit Away, you can find that website at spiritedaway.us. You can also find them on Instagram at spiritedawayny. Douglas Waters, founder and owner of Spirit Away and Dry Atlas by Spirited Away. Thanks for being here. Thank you so much, Patrick. FOMO. If you like today's show, please be sure to rate it and recommend it to your friends. And as always, you can find me on Instagram at Patrick J. McGinnis, on Twitter at PJ McGinnis, and on the web at FOMOSapiens.com or PatrickMcGinnis.com, where you can get all kinds of free resources to live a more decisive and entrepreneurial life. FOMO. Want more FOMO Sapiens and FOMO Monday? Head over to FOMOSapiens.com where you can listen to past episodes, learn more about the show, and find out how to advertise. You can also connect with me on Instagram at Patrick J. McGinnis and on Twitter at PJ McGinnis. 